Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Between Physique. Thank you for stopping by for what is hopefully, hopefully being the keyword, a quick little workout commentary video. I want to give you guys a bit of a training update, especially after the last video, which was this massive 30 minute informational video and the response has been fantastic. It seems like a lot of you guys are really enjoying that, but honestly, 31 minutes is a bit overkill. And today I wanna to focus on a specific topic. This is a topic or an issue for me I've had for a long time related to my deltoid development because it's not the best muscle group for me from a genetic standpoint. For example, in comparison to muscle groups such as my back, there is definitely a big disparity. And I'm gonna talk about a few of the things which have helped me over the last two years bring up my deltoid development to a more proportioned overall symmetrical physique as opposed to having one super developed muscle group and one that is clearly lagging behind. So here is my physique. This is, I believe, winter of 2015. This is in the middle of my bulk, hence the higher body fat percentage. And right off the bat, the thing that sticks out to me is that my deltoid is definitely disproportionately a little, you know, it's a little lagging behind in terms of, for example, my arms. Now jumping about a year and a half or so to last week, this is from my Instagram. And as you guys can tell, it's like night and day in terms of deltoid development. Now, right off the bat, before I go any further, because a lot of you guys may be seeing this and you're like, wow, it's crazy. Like what? You know, your deltoids doubled inside. Not necessarily. This is Instagram. Let's be honest. The best lighting, the best filters, the best pose where I'm holding like one arm is holding a cable and I'm pressing my entire arm against my body as, you know, as much as possible to make my deltoids stick out. Honestly, I think we took 40 photos from this one little mini gym shoot and I ended up taking one and putting it on my Instagram. So welcome to social media where we only choose the best of the best. On the other hand, this is from about three or four weeks ago so it's still a very recent photo it's about a year and a half from the photo you guys saw originally and this is a lot more uh, realistic in terms of my deltoid development and there is definitely a pretty good in my opinion improvement in terms of the overall size the separation uh, the, that overall, you know, that capped deltoid look where the, your, uh, your deltoids are a little bit more circular. Yeah, it's a little bit more of that. Now, it's not as good as this, which is, you know, the world of Instagram and lightings and filters and all that stuff. But in my opinion, it's still a lot better uh, than this. Now, the other thing you can take into consideration, which I like personally because it is completely objective. January 2016 on the dumbbell shoulder press, which, by the way, is my favorite exercise when it comes to uh, your deltoids, specifically your anterior deltoids, which is just a fancy scientific way of saying the front part of your shoulders. It's pretty much the most important part from a visual standpoint when you are standing in front of someone. So January 2016, this is in the middle of my bulk. I was probably around 200, 205 pounds, definitely at my biggest in size at the time. I was doing 70 pounds for about three sets of 10 reps, pretty good, pretty clean form. To make the comparison a lot easier because you know, how many reps you do it, how many sets, how many, all, all this stuff can kind of get confusing. Let's plug those numbers into a one rep max estimator, a one rep max calculator. In this case, 70 pounds, 10 reps. This comes out to an estimated one rep max, estimated being the keyword of 93 pounds. Fast forward to May of 2016. This is about two months out from my summer 2016 competition. I am starting to get leaner, but unfortunately with that, I am starting to get weaker. It's at least at the time, I thought that that's an unavoidable consequence of low carbohydrate, um, low calorie diets and all that good stuff. And by good, I mean, you want to put a bullet in your head because you're sitting here crying over a Snickers bar. I was doing 55 pounds for three sets of 12 reps. So overall volume did increase because I'm doing a little bit higher rep stuff, but 55 pounds is a pretty sharp strength decrease. And to be honest, for a guy my size, it's it's not that good. This comes out to an estimated one rep max of 82 pounds. So not terrible, but definitely a solid 10 or 15% lower than what I was doing from a strength standpoint. Skipping ahead to January of 2017, I just arrived in Australia. This is the beginning of my Ascension series. Uh, this is like episode two or something. I was doing 66 pounds for three sets of 12 reps. Similar rep number, higher weight, Estimated one rep max, 98 pounds. This is the highest so far we've talked about in this video, so it's good. This is the strongest I've ever been from an estimated one rep max standpoint. But here is where the point of this video comes in, which is something which I'm really happy to talk about, and maybe you guys can learn a little bit from this. May 2017, this is literally like three or four days ago, 84 pounds, three sets, eight reps, and in my opinion, with pretty good, pretty clean form. Or at least I think it's decent form. It's, you know, it's not perfect, but you know, it's 90, 95% perfect. There's a few, you know, little tweaks I I'd like to make. That comes out to an estimated one rep max of 104 pounds. And the crazy thing about that, from a strength standpoint, this is the heaviest that I've ever done, whether it be in terms of sheer weight or rep number, anything. And 
And this is at a body weight. I think on this day I was like 178 or 179 pounds. And this feels fantastic. Now in this video, I want to talk about four things which I've specifically done over the last one or two years, which have helped me get stronger. In addition to the fact that I'm actually at a lower body weight, which is almost counterintuitive. And I'll be honest, if you were to ask me this about a year ago, I'd say the same thing. I'd say like, good luck, not going to happen. So the first thing is deloads. And in general, uh, doing more lighter. I've always subscribed to the fact that go 100% all the time. I used to be doing like dumbbell shoulder press. I do like three or four sets of eight and that's it. Everything would be to failure. Everything was just go, go, go heavy, heavy, heavy. Every single workout, every single week, every single month. But as I've mentioned in previous videos, and especially with the release of my ultimate hypertrophy program, two things which I've really added in is number one, scheduled deloads, which by the way, this workout is coming off of a deload week. You know, it's like a form of active rest. You're still training, but you're training with a lot less intensity and you are able to come back with a somewhat recuperated for lack of a better word in terms of your central nervous system, in terms of your muscles, and in doing so, you were able to train with a little bit higher intensity and hit those precious PRs. And in addition, throwing some lighter workouts in there. This kind of falls under the umbrella of periodization, which I've talked about a little in the past, how you can't just go to the gym. Again, I was doing this two, three, four years ago, and this is why I think I did progress, but I kind of stagnated a little bit, just doing the exact same hardcore thing every time. Now I'm kind of fluctuating in terms of my rep scheme, my, my strength scheme. You know, I did those three or four weeks of a mesocycle one where I was doing a little bit lighter stuff, doing something like four sets of 12 reps. And in doing so, you're alternating the way that you train. And I think this is a big factor to why this cycle specifically, I am the strongest that I have ever been. Because even though my carbs and calories on average are less than when I was bulking, just the overall training system is a lot better. And that brings me into thing number two, which is consistency. I used to hate doing the overhead press. This is why I've talked about how the dumbbell shoulder press is my favorite workout for the deltoids. I hated the overhead press. I think it really did a lot of crappy, awkward stuff to my back. I'd be doing the exercise looking like a question mark. This resulted in an increase uh, risk of injury. And in doing so, I didn't really like shoulder training as much. So once I was able to specifically focus on the dumbbell shoulder press, I still do the overhead press, by the way, just a little bit differently, but I'll talk about that in a future video. And because now I have a structured and scheduled workout in my actual program, I'm not just going into the gym and saying, hey, I'll do this when I feel like it, I'll do this move, you know, these random exercises, this random, pretty much doing whatever I feel like that day. Now that I have a much more strategic scheduled and overall consistent approach to my training with this one this really becomes necessary because I'm just like I think this has really helped me despite the fact that my calories and carbohydrates aren't as high as they were back when I was like 205 pounds. The third thing is mobility and stretching. I used to be the kind of guy who'd go into the gym. I do like four seconds of warm up. My muscles, joints, and connective tissue is not warmed up. It's not ready to go. And this again would probably increase my prevalence of injury, whether it be muscle, ligament, tendon tears, whatever you name it, it's not good. So what I've been doing is spending at least minimum 15 to 20 minutes of general mobility and stretching uh, before my workouts, specifically my deltoid workouts, because I've have had a little bit of shoulder issues, little minor tweaks here and there. And if you guys want a great resource, I highly recommend Matt Ogus's upper body mobility. He's got a fantastic, I think it's like max 10 minute video. He covers some of his favorite movements. You don't have to do them all, but you can pick and choose four or five, six of your favorites. If you do them on a consistent basis prior to your workouts, it's going to help dramatically. Your workouts are going to feel better. You're going to be injured a lot less overall good stuff. And the fourth thing, which is the biggest contributor to why I am able to retain, you know, this amount of strength on my cut this time around. And I've talked about this in the past, but it's simply, I am taking it a lot slower. In my case, I've lost about 15 ish pounds over the last like four months or so. Now it's not that crazy considering there's people on YouTube who've dropped like 25, 30 pounds in that same amount of time. Now there's good news and badness to this. The good news is, like I said, I am able to retain a lot more strength. I'm able to probably retain a lot more muscle, but the bad is simply that I'm not peeled and shredded just yet. My cut this year, I really think I'm going to separate into two portions. Portion number one, which is what I've been doing which is what I am pretty much just about to finish right now. Casual, kind of like you look good in the gym, you look good on the beach, you look good when you're at expos. However, competition prep, that's something which is going to start soon. I'm, I'm really excited for that. A lot of you guys have been asking me, am I competing this year? When am I competing? The answer is 100% yes. I am looking at multiple competitions. We're talking August or September. I have a few that I'm pretty much almost decided on and I'll probably select one very soon. And when that time comes, this kind of general casual leaning down is going to turn into a full throttle competition 
prep. Really looking forward to that. But in the meantime, guys, that's it. I know I said that's going to be short. And guess what? I, I lied because I can see the counter and I've been rambling for like 15 minutes. But screw it. There's a lot of information I like to cover. And uh, I'd rather give you guys too much than too little. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.